Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm going to be showing you a uh, quick tutorial on uh, doing this uh, low res effect you see here. I know I tried to get this done like a week ago between my mic breaking and then finding out that the uh, recording program I was using was terrible. Kind of set me back a bit. So, but yeah. Anyways, uh, let's get to it. I'll show you how to set all this stuff up. Okay, first thing first, just assuming you don't have a clue what the hell is going on over here. And how to set up any post process stuff. I'll walk you through the basics of it. Go over here where the geometry tab is and click on volumes. In volumes, scroll down. Go down a little bit and eventually you'll see something called a post process volume. Now click it and then drag it out into the level. You'll see this little uh, purple box shows up. This doesn't do anything right now, but uh, later on it, you'll use it to uh, visualize the effect. Otherwise, without the volume there, you wouldn't be able to see anything. But yeah, anyways, I'm going to walk you through uh, setting up this, which seems like a lot, I guess, but it's not that bad. I'll walk you through all the steps of it, so if you get confused, you'll be alright. Alright, well, let's start off. I have a folder just for post process materials. You don't need one, but if you want to organize it that way, you can. And uh, yeah, let's right click in the empty spot on here and click material. It's going to ask for a name, and just for the purpose of doing this, I'm going to call it low. Oops, did not mean to do that. <laughs> um, where's rename? There it is. Low res. And then say tut. You can name it whatever you like. Just what I named it. Double click it. It'll pop up the material editor. Let me change some settings really quick. There we go. Just making it so I can actually see the uh, top bar. Stupid little recorder thing was blocking it. Well, yeah. Anyways, really quick. Uh, right off the back when you're in your uh, material editor here. Over on the left you'll see where it says physical material and material. Change this right here where it says material domain. Change that to a post process effect. I'll change all this so there's only an emissive color now. Alright, and uh, just for the sake of uh, setting this up I'm gonna start at the tail end of this and then work my way back in. Alright, yeah let's get started with that. Alright, let's right click and just type in view. You'll get a view size node. And then that is going to a divide, and you're gonna hold D and click. It gives you the uh, that's the shortcut for uh, divide. And if in case you don't know about shortcuts on the right here, see how there's a constant one, two, three, and four? That little number right there on the side, that means it's a shortcut key. So if I held held down four and clicked. I get a constant for it. So if you uh, want to, you can take a minute and then scroll through here and just look at all the uh, shortcuts. See, a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Give it a minute, look it over, and then start back up here. But yeah. Anyways, then uh, hold one, and then click. And that pops up this. And then you're gonna want to right-click this, this constant or whatever, and click convert to parameter. And now we're going to name it down, scale, factor. We just have a default value of 4 for this, I believe. Let me glance back, yep. And plug that into the B. And the reason we're making this a uh, scalar parameter is so that uh, later on we'd make a material instance of this. You'll be able to uh, test this live and make changes to it as you need. And I really quick in place you didn't know, you can click and drag with the mouse. And that highlights multiple things at a time, or if you want to, you can control click. And that works too. Let's say you want to move everything but one thing, you can control click something to unselect it too. So, yeah, anyways, I'm going to move this over, make some space. Okay, a texture coordinate. Just type that in. Let's see, there it is right there. Just click it, and it immediately pops up. Nice and convenient. Alright, let's go into a multiply. And you leave this one default, by the way. I didn't make any changes to it. Alright. 
right, a floor and a seal. Again, just click it, it pops right up. And if you want to go over here, you can do it too. Let's go. And with this one, you can't just click it. You gotta, you know, excuse me. You have to click and drag. Again, it does the same thing, it's just a different way of doing it. Whatever you prefer. Alright. Gonna add those two together. And zoom out. You can use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out in case you didn't know that. Drag that over again. Just keep making more room for it. <laughs> Alright. After the add, we got a multiply. Press and. Oh, in case you didn't know that. Press and hold A, and that gives you the add. In case I just kind of glanced over that and didn't say anything. But yeah, anyways, uh, shortcut for multiply is press and hold M and click. Drag that over, and then press and hold 1 and click. And then type in a uh, 0 0.5, I think is what I used. Gives you a nice gray. <laughs> Plug this into a divide, press and hold D. down some and uh, yeah just connect that back to the divide sorry just thinking out loud in my head mm -hmm. all right from this divide we are going to a now oh, we're on the scene texture sample right click type in scene mm -hmm. under texture you'll see scene texture plug the UV into the into the divide and then let's zoom out, make some more room. Alternatively, you don't probably you, you probably could just start really far out and then move it back in, but just the way I'm doing it right now. All right, we need another constant one. Click that, and then as you can see, this one's called color space conversion, and for its value, we got a 0 0.25. Anyways, let's right click it, convert it to a parameter again. Name it color space conversion. Now again, you can name this whatever you want. You don't have to use my naming conventions. It's just a uh, way of remembering what things do. So that way when you're adjusting this later on, you'll know what what it's affecting, you know? Alright, connect that to a power. Let's type it over here, for example. There it is. Connect that to the color node. This to the X. All right, that goes into a multiply. Again, press and hold M to click. Drag it in, and then we need another node, and we'll hold down one and click. Again, just like him. Then right click, convert to parameter, and name it colors. I believe I set this to 16. I'll double check, make sure. It's good to double check these things. <laughs> yeah, 16. Alright, now from that multiply, we're gonna need another one of the, these two. Now, if you don't know how to make copies, I'll just do a quick cover of that. Click and hold both of them. Yeah, again, you can drag with the mouse. And you can press Control C, and then click over here, and press Control V, and it'll pop them up right where you click. Alternatively, if you don't want to do that, you can select both of them. And press Control and W, and it makes an immediate copy of them right nearby. Again, there's no right or wrong way of doing it; just whatever you like. All right, plug them in. This is going into a linear interpolate, or called a lerp for short. Press and hold L, and then click. Alternatively, you can just type in L, and usually the first thing it highlights right here is this guy right there. Linear interpolate. But yeah, anyways, we're going to the seal into A and the floor into B. No, I believe we need another uh, scalar parameter. So press and hold 1 and click. Then right click it, convert to parameter. And name this one dark area. 
believe I use a value of 0 0.95. Yep. Go to the alpha. And that lerp goes into a divide. Cancel the autosave because it's annoying. Let's move this down some. And now, uh, really quick, in case you're uh, looking at this and you're going, there's like a maze of wires at some point. You can click, let's, for example, uh, this divide goes all the way back over here, and you might get lost with these strings going each way. Hover over the uh, connector for the divide node, so you see the plus. It'll fade out all the other lines, make them make the one that you're, you're uh, hovering over. It'll make it kind of glow, just in case you missed it. Hover over it. It makes it really easy to uh, figure out what's going where in case you get something really complicated or long. Something to pay attention to in case you uh, start getting confused or lost. <laughs> But yeah, anyways, where were we at the divide after the lerp? Alright, so that divide after the lerp goes all the way back to the colors. Move him up. Alright. That's going into a clamp. And then let's grab everything again one more time. Alright, right click. Clamp. There he is. Connect it. The min and max is fine at zero and one. And then I believe we need a power. Yep. Right click. Pow. There you go. Power goes into a divide. Again, press and hold D and click. Plug that in, and then you can do another constant one, just hold one and click. And then, really quick, just because I'm just going to set this to, uh, I believe it was 0.5. If you don't really uh, need to see this color data here, see how this one's in shrunk and it's mini? You can click this little arrow here, and it shrinks it down for you. So that way you can keep things a little bit more, you know, organized and save space and such. Not that you have to do that, it's just something you might want to do. And again, if you're having trouble finding it, hover over it and follow the lines. You see if it's got multiple lines coming out, you can highlight it and it'll see how it's going to the power too now. It'll cover all the things connected to that little connector there. But yeah, anyways, this divide goes back over to the color space conversion. Alright, so let's drag him. Bring them all the way over here to this guy. And if you're like me and you don't like seeing the lines go through things, move him down some. Uh, move him wherever you want, really. Doesn't really matter. Make it as confusing as you want it to be. <laughs> Not that it needs to be, but, uh... I don't know. Just the way some people are. Alright, power into the emissive color, I believe. Do, 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 do. Yep. Alright. Scroll through here, make sure everything looks okay. I think it does. Hit apply. Save. In case you haven't already. And then with our post process volume out here, in case you deselect it and you can't manage to click it, you just keep missing. I mean, it's not that hard for me, but. Maybe for you it is. You can over here and just type in, if you can't find it in your list, just type in post, and you'll see a post process volume. Then just scroll down. Eventually you'll get to a category called miscellaneous. Yep, there she is. And click this little plus arrow. And then with your uh, material selected over here, click this arrow. And now it didn't do anything because we're not in the volume right now, so if I scroll down here, all pixelated. See how that works? Alternatively, you could I think you can apply this to the camera you're, that you're using for your characters if you want this always going on, you can. But uh, for our test, it's not needed. Alright, but yeah, let's say you want to uh, use 
those scalar parameters we made, in case you're uh, not aware of what those are for. Let's show you what those do right now. Right click this, your material in the thing, right click it, and then you're going to see up here, under material actions, create material instance. Click it, and it'll create a uh, low res to or low res to it, and then underscore instance, it usually just adds the underscore instance. For our tutorial, that's fine, it's not really that big of a deal. But anyways, uh, just you can right click it and then just save it really quick. And then with it selected, replace it, uh, replace our old one over in the post in the post process volume. Click the arrow to use the selected asset from the content browser, and it'll change to the underscore instance just so you know. And then double click this. And this is where this thing might get a little bit confusing. I mean, if you've never seen this before, as you see, this is very much different than this because in this you can only change these scalar parameters here. Well, you could change the parent too, but that would change what scalar parameters again I get. I believe you get. But as you can see, these are all the scalar parameters I made. The colors, the color space conversion, the dark area, downscale factor, so forth and so on. And uh, right away, you can probably see, hold on, move this over. We scroll into the volume. If we change these numbers, nothing happens. And you're probably thinking, oh, so it's broken, right? It's like, no, that's actually how it's supposed to be. Because before it does anything at all, you have to override it by clicking these check marks. So that means this will automatically overdo what its default is. And by the way, in case you uh, get too confused, let's, let me show you really quick if you anything first. See, we're adjusting the downscale factor right now. And you can do that live while so the game's running in the background there. So you could edit this with Blueprint or something like that and change this on the fly while you're playing if you wanted to. Which is actually pretty neat. Yeah, anyways, let's say you set a really random number and you can't remember, oh god, what the hell did I do? I can't even make heads or tails of this. It's like, you know, a bunch of weird pixelated blocks. <laughs> if you want to fix that really quick, and you you can click this little thing right here. Reset the default, this little yellow arrow. That was the importance of, uh, in here, setting the default value to these. So that way you always had a baseline that you can jump back to if in case you uh, break things a little bit too much. But yeah. Anyways, I think that about covers everything here. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments, and uh, if you leave me a like, that would be great. And uh, have fun messing with the real, you guys.